Hello folks, welcome again to another review show. For my name is the one, the only Hobo Tom. And it's time to do a very quick review about Impact Bound for Glory. Interesting show. Um they did the opposite of what WWE did and the fact that they advertised more matches than they had. Because on the pre-show, which will probably be on Tuesday, which I'm going to miss. I don't know, last time they had, a, they had a recap show, they just like sat on a couch and talked about stuff. So the pre-show featured, I think it was Kira Hogan versus Shasti Blackheart. I think so. I don't know who won that. And then also on the pre-show, match I was kind of looking forward to was the Rascals versus Dr. Wagner Jr. and Aristar and Taurus. What's up, Impact? I do understand, because this was actually a three-hour long show that honestly only felt like two hours. I'm kind of impressed. Um, oh, I have to give shout-outs. Bren22! You, sir, just got the six count. And Lindsay, you are a master air drummer.
Well, let's see. I have special, I have special guest host. A few predictions for me on um, Saturday. That was the Techno Blue Ranger. Thank you very much, Techno Blue Ranger. Let's tally up. Let's see here. No. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Oh, wait, that was really it. So the televised matches, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'd do this again. Weird. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seven. I'll see what that's weird. Uh oh. There we go. That should be better. There's getting some weird lag stuff going on. So, you know what? If Impact was run by WWE, they'd be in. I got the. Did I get any bonuses right? Let's see, your match of the night. Actually, it was match of the night. Snooze. Oh, yeah. And let's see, where was my Stone Cold Lock? Oh, that was my... I don't even know. But I'll tell you what. That Techno Blue Ranger. He must have transcendent powers. For... He guessed pretty good. And I'll say because he got some some stipulations right, he is in the head of one Jean-Paul Avec. Or Paul Avec. And let's talk about the actual matches. Um, we start off with a gauntlet match. And I'm going to start off the drink because that really wasn't a gauntlet match. That was actually their version of the Royal Rumble. I guess. I wonder if WWE trademarked the Royal Rumble. So that's to call it something, because it wasn't a gauntlet match. It was more like the Royal Rumble, where they had uh, numbers 1 through 20, and every minute, I think, a new wrestler came out. It was fun. It starts off uh, with Eddie Edwards. I think Sunil Singh. And then the stream went fuzzy. And all I know is that it was Eddie Edwards, Joey Ryan. Sunil Singh, Reno Scum, and Cousin Jake. And someone else was in the ring. Eddie Edwards, Joey Ryan, Sunil Singh, Cousin Jake. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot that Reno Scum's two people. That was really fun. Joey Ryan. <laughs> he got everyone. With a dick flip. Yes. The king of dong style. Reign supreme. And news, folks. Joey Ryan signed with Impact Wrestling. He's no longer a true independent wrestler. Hey, job security is a lot. I can't fault him for that. Uh, then Rosemary comes out. Who else is there? Jessica Havoc shows up, beat up beats up everyone. Joey Ryan. Cut that ball of oil. Open up his trunks. And me as a poor. That oil down there. Oh, Joey Ryan, you sicko. Is, Joey, is Impact ready for Joey Ryan? I don't know. 
I don't think any places could ever be ready for Joey Ryan. Uh, he did that right in front of Rosemary and Jessica Happy. <laughs> the two of them were like, Yeah. They were going to have some fun afterwards. I don't care what they say. I think Jessica Havoc's single and Rosemary is, I think, a divorcee. Ooh. Yeah, let's get some of that milf loving. Oh. She's not, yeah, she is kind of, she is right around that age. I think she's in her upper 30s. Jessica Havoc, I know, is younger. But Rosemary is like 35 to 37, I think. That's in a hobo Tom's dating range. Barely, but i tap that. Uh, Madman phone then comes in next. Uh, Joey Ryan. He pulled, he, he went down into the trunks and pulled out that light pop and stuck it right in Man Man Fold's mouth. Jerry Ryan's full of so many entertaining spots. And then Cody Diener comes down to the ring. Johnny Swinger. Oh, in the most pay per view appropriate ring guard. Oh, wow. Jordan Grace was next. Uh, Swagger came out. Uh, for the most part, Johnny Swinger hung out the outside of the ring. He didn't want to go in. Once Swaggle came out, he chased Johnny Swinger into the ring. <laughs> and Johnny Swinger made the ultimate mistake by tapping Jordan Grace right on her booty. Johnny Swinger, you are the man. Uh, that prompted... Jordan Grace to go upset, toss him from the ring. <laughs> that was still funny. Uh, Kira Hogan then, then comes in the ring. Uh, I don't know, doesn't do much. Raju. Rahik Raju comes in next. Then Tommy Dreamer. Kylie Ray shows up! It's good to see Kylie Ray back. I think she lives in the Chicago area. I don't think she liked the AEW travel schedule. I think, and this is just pure innuendo and speculation and me thinking after having a drink of an alcohol, of an adult beverage. I don't think Kylie Ray liked the other women in AEW. Britt Baker seems to be a bitch. Brie Priestley, a bitch. She wouldn't want to do the job to Brandy. Awesome calling, I guess she's fine with. She probably has no idea who Riho is. Probably Riho's like hand picked. By Kenny Omega, but she knows she's not going to get the belt over her anytime. So yeah, Kylie Ray had a bunch of reasons to leave. Let her be independent. Let her sign to Impact. Or I'll tell you what, the Impact Women's Division stacked so much better than anything else. I mean, AEW's women's division is crap. WWE's division, women's division is good. The top tier is really good. Everyone else is kind of that mid-carter. Again, probably with the exception of Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, and Bailey. Everyone else is a mid-carter. And that's you, blue-haired Sasha. Boo, blue-haired Sasha. And boo, Sonya Deville. She should be back on NXT. She should do the job for my princess. Kimberly. Uh, and who else showed up? Didn't even show up. Kylie Ray was there. Palaba. Oh, he's fun. Was there? Um, Sabu showed up. S Sabu looked confused. I don't think. 
like he was the only man standing easy and he's like what, what do I do? It's like, do I get him? Do I get him? Help me, Genie. Um, he had a spot, and then he's like, what do I do now? But he was a cool guy, though. I met him once. Uh, then she, she, Shira came in, and that completed the, the 20 man. And after everything was said and done, Ma, or Doc, or the Techno Blue Rangers pick, Eddie Edwards is victorious. I'll tell you what, this was fun. This was a surf and turf Royal Rumble. No complaints about that. They just have to call it a Rumble, that's all. And then the gauntlet match, that's different. Then it was Ty Valkyrie versus Tennille Dashwood. Man. Uh, Taya jumps, Seal Dashwood to begin the match was probably the best thing. Taya Valkyrie has the best women's outfits. They are so bordering on colored see-through outfits. That's some big boobies. And she always has a sparkle bra. I'm surprised I haven't made this thing just by chanting sparkle bra, sparkle bra. That would be funny. But man, that's Johnny Window's wife. He married above his weight class. That's good to see. Uh, this was kind of a classic wrestling match. Uh, the butterfly, uh, Tennille Dashwood hit the butterfly suplex, which is any kind of a version of a suplex I'm always happy with. Uh, then there was some rough stuff on the ring apron. It looked almost like a pedigree on the ring apron. Ouch! And it looked like Tennille Dashwood nest nicked her side of her head on that. Ooh, I have a text message. I have two text messages. Nope, you deserve it. You deserve it. You, uh, what are you up to? Friday. That's going to be my first day off in two weeks. That's impressive. A symbol question mark. There we go. But this was fun. Um, Ty Valkyrie just tried to cheat because Johnny Bravo brought like a stuffed chihuahua or some stuffed lap dog. So you have, I don't know, whatever the name is versus Daryl in like a death match. Daryl the stuffed cat. A death match one day, I hope. So he took the chain off the, the, the stuffed toy dog, passed it to Taya Valkyrie. She wrapped her on her wrist. Couldn't smack Tenille with it. Tenille's like, I don't need this chain. Tenille, you're stupid. You need as much help as you can get. There are reasons why you were let go of WWE. Never liked her as Emma in WWE. She was dull, predictable. Her and Dana Brooke in NXT was fun, though. But you know that had a ceiling. So then eventually Ty did hit uh, Ride to Valhalla or something, whatever that is. And Ty Valkyrie won, retained her belt. Not too much to complain about besides one botch. That just looked rough. It's a cheeseburger of a match. Then we have the Tag Team Triple Threat featuring the North versus Rob Van Dam and Rhino versus William Mack and Rich Swan. Uh, Mack and Swan, they, they're, they're so good as a team. Again, they do the classic double teams, which is so fun to watch. They do it with speed, and they do the high spots as a double team. It's really good. Uh, RVD is a classic RVD. We hit the monkey flip, the Van Daminator rolling thunder. The North are just such a good technical team. The thing I liked about this match is that each team brought their own unique style to the match, so it didn't feel repetitive. It felt like each team did their own thing, and each thing they did was different. So it was fun in that. Uh, until And then it became a spot fest. And then, whoa, RVD swerved Rhino. 
No one saw that coming. Uh, then he started to beat up Willie Mack and Rich Swan. No one first saw that. Then he left. He was like, Pfft. I'm going to go have my go and go back in the hot tub with my wife and her friends. Trust me. Don't get me wrong. I would rather be in the hot tub with RVD, his wife, and her friends rather than here. In fact, if RVD's wife came to my place of employment and said, we want you in the hot tub on the boat, I'll be like, see you guys. I'm gone. <laughs> I told the people at work. Kim Kardashian says, I, I got a boat for you. Take, take me fishing. <laughs> I'm gone. This was a fun match. It was a good cheeseburger match. But, oh, there was a guy with a sign saying, Simon Miller's my dad. Simon Miller, don't put it where it doesn't belong. Oh. And then it was Mara Fuji versus Mike Elgin. This was really a New Japan style match. I don't think the crowd was looking forward to this. It was that slow, slotting, strike heavy. Let's see who can hit each other in the face more with feet and elbows. And oh, by the way, let's have a neck breaking match. He who eats the most neck breakers wins or loses. However, that goes to New Japan. Sometimes it feels like the winner doesn't really win. Uh, so it just felt it felt like a fight. I was thinking it was botchy, but it had that fight botch to it where they're tr really trying to counter. And it's like, I'm not getting hit in the face by you. Which makes sense. Because if you're in a fight, you really don't want to get hit in the face. Uh, then there was elbows for everyone. I mean, who, who could strike the most? Then uh, Elegant kicked out of two sliced breads. Marifuji kicked out of a couple power bombs. And then they were trading chops. But eventually, Mike Elgin was too much for, for Marifuji. In a very, again, New Japan style match. So Mike Elgin goes over. I'll tell you what. Hard to complain about this match. This is another cheeseburger match. Then the next match was the ladder match. Was it? Oh, yeah, it was. It was Tessa Blanchard versus Ace Austin versus AC Romero. Whoa. Versus Daga versus Jay Christ. Oh, wait, wait. Ohio versus everyone. This was fun. I don't know who AC Romero is, but I want to see him and Fall Ball tag team together. That would just be fun to watch. Uh, <laughs> AC got smashed by a ladder. They did the teeter totter with a ladder. Kind of like. What happened accidentally to John Mercury? But they did this on purpose, so at least AC Romero's face did not explode. Unlike John Mercury's nose, who's just exploded all over the place. Uh, Daga, he has some quick feet. He's fast though. Um, Daga eventually ended up with Tessa to take care of Ace Austin and Jake Christ. Uh, Tessa just goes after Jay Chris. She just doesn't like the Chris brothers. And that's fine. Uh, again, that ladder spot was good. What was there? Oh! That's right. The crowd was chanting, Safety first. Safety first. If you ever get a new job, the first thing you have to watch is a bunch of videos. And one video is always entitled either the safe, for the most part, it's called the safety first video, where you learn how to climb a ladder. Really? 
Uh, and you learn how to use a fire extinguisher. Yeah, the safety first video. They were doing the safety first chant. That was funny. Uh, then I called it, though, folks. Um, I said, as soon as Josh Matthews said something about a cutter off a ladder, I said, there's going to be a cutter off a ladder, and there was a cutter off the ladder. I called it. Therefore, I win. I should be X Division champion. And uh, then there was a Lucha Destroyer on the ladder side of outside of the ring. Those are always fun. Uh, OV eventually gets involved. Dave Chris shows up. Madman Fulton shows up. They try and thwart Tessa from getting the X Division belt. However, because of their interference, it allowed Ace Austin to grab the belt. Oh, you know what that means? That means, well, first of all, this was a, f uh, this was a fun, amazing match. This is a surf and turf match. But more so, what this means is that Eddie Edwards is going to go after that exhibition title. So that should be pretty interesting to see. And then the next match was Moose versus Ken Shamrock. Kind of what I expected to be. Uh, Ken tried to kill himself, though, somehow. Um, it seemed like... Because Ken tried to do like a suicide plunge over the top rope. He landed on his chest. Weird. Because he had a huge bruise and welt on his ribs, which bruised ribs suck. It hurts to breathe. It hurts to twist. I've pulled my intercostal muscles before. Oh, hurt to breathe. Hurt to cough. It hurts to sneeze and thought you were dying. Can't twist around on like a bed. You just have to like lay there flat and say, "Oh, pain." Oh, that can't be good. Ken also seemed like he gassed himself running to the ring. Uh, Frank Trib cut the turnbuckle. Listen, Moose didn't learn anything from Frank Trig. Moose and Trig learned from the one, the only Y T R Yoro. Or Toro Yano. Break, break, break. If they did that in the match, they'd be like, that's pure gimmick infringement. Because Frank Trade cut off the top turnbuckle. Yano's better at doing that, though. Um, so again, the wrestlers realize, oh, we better stay away from exposed turnbuckle. And then Moose, when the ref's pack was turned, Gave him the low blow. Again, very Yano-like. Uh, eventually drives Ken Shamrock into said top turn buckle. Ken Shamrock semi no all because he didn't bleed. Ken Shamrock needs to bleed. Um, I think this match went on longer than I thought. Ken Shamrock got Moose in the ankle lock a couple times. Moose eventually hit the spear after he, like, knocked Ken Shamrock. He, like, I forget if he flapjacked him or buckle bombed him into the exposed turnbuckle. Whatever. Ken Shamrock got his head rocked by the top turnbuckle, then spear, then over. <sighs> it's a ham. So Moose won. It's a ham sandwich. Then I learned the next pay per view 2020. Which I will be able to cover because that means my suspension will be up because I have 39 more days on my suspension. So, Brent22, that's going to answer your question. I still have 39 more days left until I can live stream because of, of evil YouTube and cheap AEW. So, I'll be back to doing that in 39 days. So, that'll be December pay per views. And January pay-per-views. Then the next match was a main event. Oh, this was good. Sammy Callahan versus the Machine Brian Cage in a no-holds-barred match. And this was truly no hold bars bar, no holds barred match because Brian Cage is trying to murder Sammy Callahan. Sammy Callahan was bleeding 45 seconds into the match from his head.
it wasn't a true crimson mask, but yeah, he he was bleeding though. Uh, and then Kid tries to kill Sammy Callahan by using a barricade. Sammy Sammy Callahan, however, reverts that. And this construction here in Impact because it was like the build stuff. So you had two chairs set up. So chairs. Chair. On top of that, they had the barricade. Then over here were the steps. The barricade. So Brian Cage was going to power bomb Sammy Callahan through the thing. Sammy Callahan says, I'm not dying. And then he gave the thumbs up and then thumbs down. And Pyle drove, or gave him the Texas special, to Brian Cage on top of that. That was awesome. Baseball bat shows up. I don't think they used said baseball bat. Uh, the table no sold. Table no selling is entertaining to watch. Uh, the guardrail was like the, the thing to use. That was just fun. This almost felt like a softcore death match. Because eventually they start to sort of beat each other up. Callahan then found thumbtacks. Thumbtacks are good. And the crowd starts to chant, that was murder. Uh, but with the thumbtacks, he, Sammy Callahan pile drove Brian Cage on top of the thumbtack. And he kicked out at one. And it wasn't even a close one. It was like, what? Oh, he kicked out already. Was that a one count? Whoa. Uh, then Brian Cage hulks up, starts beating up Callahan, powerbombed him onto said thumbtacks, uh, pump handle driver onto the thumbtacks. And that was, for the most part, it for Sammy Callahan, which makes sense. I mean, you get pump handle driven onto thumbtacks. I'm not getting up. I'm probably giving up. I'm probably say I give as, as soon as I see as soon as I see those thumbtacks, and I'm up in a prone position. Um, Melissa Santos. So Brian Cage retains his belt. It was good. I kind of understood why. Um, Melissa Santos comes out. No sold the pile driver though. Normally when women get pile driven, they wear the neck brace or on on crutches. She was on neither. In fact, she jumped on except for she got picked up and was. By, by her husband, Brian Cage, and, and they trot around the ring for a little bit. Not the thing that someone, someone does after they get pile-driven. So, this was a fun match, though. It was 20 minutes, so... I mean, this is this is the main event, though, so that's worth being 20 minutes. This was another surf and turf match. Overall, this whole pay-per-view was really a cheeseburger. It felt quicker than three hours. The best matches in this match felt a little underwhelming with the when when you compare it. So, so let's just compare um, main events. This main event was a lot better than the Hell and Cell main event. Their gimmick matches here seemed a lot better than WWE's gimmick matches. The Hell in the Cell with Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks Ideally, could have been either the pay, either the main event, or right before the main event, and that would have been better. I think the timing was was off because they because Hell in a Cell started up here, and it went down here. Impact, yeah, it's it's good, a little bad, much better. It's a lot more even keel of a show to watch. That's probably the best way to put it. And that was Impact Bound for Glory, which is, I think, their final pay-per-view for the year. Um, I wonder if they have something in December. 
Well, whatever it is, I'll try and carry it because my suspension will be up. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Have a good night, and I'll see everyone probably Tuesday for my raw review show. Good night.